Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to the Certification Training Module. This module will be on EasyWeb 2015. On the Isonus website, if we click on Support and go to Software Downloads, we can download the EasyWeb 2015 software, our installation document, and our EasyWeb 2015 user guide. In previous modules, we've talked about EasyWeb 2015 as a software module that enhances the end user experience. Now we'll look at installing it and walking through the feature set. I won't actually install the software, but we'll take a look at the software install guide. So if we look at the host computer running DB Crystal, DB Crystal talks to Microsoft SQL Server, and then EasyWeb 2015 also talks to Microsoft SQL Server. We must have DB Crystal running and SQL Server installed in order for EasyWeb 2015 to operate. DB Crystal performs all the functionality of communicating with the PowerNet reader controllers and IP bridges out in the system and giving us 100% administrator functionality. And then EasyWeb 2015 is geared towards the actual end user experience. We do need Microsoft.NET 4.5 installed. In the installation guide, it will walk you through how to install that if you do not already have it installed. You must also have Microsoft Internet Information Servers installed. Again, the user guide will help you turning that on through various versions of Windows. Make sure that your Microsoft updates have been applied and that you have DB Crystal installed. Then you can go through the installation process of EasyWeb 2015. EasyWeb 2015 is a licensed application. When you install it, you do have a 30-day trial of the software before it will need to be fully licensed in order to function. On my PC, I have DB Crystal, SQL Server, and EasyWeb 2015 already running. When you install it, it will provide you with this link to log on. It's basically the IP address or name of the PC at port 8091 forward slash login. This will be a login to get you into the system. By default, it's admin and a password. So you can save this password or not. I'm not going to save it. So when we first log in, we are brought to this dashboard screen. This dashboard screen shows all of the recent history within our system as well as all of the doors within our system. From here, we could search by doors. So if we remember from our earlier modules, we have a manager's door group, an office door group, and a warehouse door group. This way you could quickly see everything within the system. So we could click on the warehouse door group and just see those. And here we can see any alarms within our system. We don't have an alarm right now, but I'll go ahead and create one. So in the background, you can hear my monitor station giving an audible alarm, and we can see that the cafeteria door is in emergency open state. If we look at our actions, we have a clear button. At the time of this recording, this clear button is a future release within EasyWeb. So for right now, I'll just go ahead and go to the monitor station, and we'll go ahead and clear that alarm out of there. So now we come back to EasyWeb and we see that the alarm condition has been cleared out. Within each door, we can take specific actions. We saw that the clear button is going to be a future release for EasyWeb. But we can admit access. We could lock down the door, set the door unlocked, or set it back to its normal state. We could also do global actions across all of the doors, creating a lockdown all, an unlock all, etc. The search box here is very powerful. It will actually search across all the text and all the fields and columns in that group. So here we'll search through the doors and I could just type in office. It will find all the doors that are labeled office. If I wanted to see all the closed doors, I would type in close and it would search across all the columns in there and find anything that says closed. If I want to see doors that are just unlocked, and I type in unlocked, and it searches across that mode column and pulls up the doors that are unlocked. So all the search fields within EasyWeb are created that way. Now if we scroll down to our recent history, this recent history is set in DB Crystal. So if we go to DB Crystal and we click on history, the amount of history shown in EasyWeb is set here in our current history file. By default, it's set at one day, but I've changed my retention to seven days. So in our recent history, we see that we can go back seven days. So by default, it's gonna pull up all the history for that date. 
We'll go ahead and filter it by the latest event being at the top. And then we can see all the different operations that have happened within there. So if I want to go back further, I can go back the full week to last Friday. And it'll actually pull in all of that history from that time. And then I can go ahead and use these filters here. So if I want to just look at a certain door or a door group, a specific activity type, or I can just go ahead and go to my search box again and type in, start typing in and search across all of those columns and fields within there. So if I want to see every time that Anders has gone through a door, I can just click on or just type in Anders. Or if I want to see any time Jan has gone through a door. So if this is an actual report that I want to print, I can just click on create report here and it'll pull up into a PDF file that I can print from here, save or email out to somebody else. So that's the recent history. Now let's take a look at the settings within our system. So we can actually upload a logo and change the company name to brand the EasyWeb website as our own. We can choose if we want special badge settings and to display alarms within the system. More importantly, we can choose whether we want to auto compile yes or no. In previous modules, we've seen that compiling actually pushes out the permissions to all of our Isonus devices out on the network. With auto compile turned off, which is default, if you try to close out of the application or log out, it will remind you if you have made changes within the system to push the compiles out. Or we could just set it to auto compile so that every time we make a change, it'll actually automatically compile and push those settings out. For now, I'm just going to leave auto compile off. We can change some of the door functionality if we do not want others to be able to allow an admit, an unlock, a lockdown, or resetting doors back to normal. At the top of the web page, we have our main navigation bar, which are our people, rules, and our dashboard. And on our left, we see a secondary navigation. This will change depending on what we choose in the main navigation. So going back to our dashboard, we can see our compiles. Right now, I haven't made any changes, so we don't have anything queued up in the system. If we're using rostering and tracking zones, we can see who's in and who's out. We can see scripts in the system, and we can run scripts, but we cannot create scripts through EasyWeb. And we can pull up different reports. On our dashboard, we have recent history. This is only going to go back so many days depending on how you set it up in DB Crystal. When we go to actual reports, we can go back longer histories. So we can run a roster report, see who's in, who's out, or everybody. We can run a history report, but now we can actually go back the full length of the database. So here I can go back from May 1st to May 15th. And I could run a report and see which shifts are actually in the system. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the people navigation. So we can see all the people within our system, we can see all of the people groups, and we can see all the users. Users are assigned to an area to administrate that area through EasyWeb. So for example, if we have a large building that has 10 different tenants and the owner of that building puts in Isonus, they could create 10 different areas, one for each individual business, create a user and allow each user to administrate just their local business and not be able to see anything else within the system. So let's go ahead and add a person in the system and we'll see how easy it is through EasyWeb 2015. So we'll click on the Add Person button. The first thing you notice is that we have steps that we need to accomplish in order to add a person in the system. First, we have to create their profile. Then we have to add that person to a group, provide them with the badge, and give them some rules so that they have access into the system. So let's go ahead and add myself. From here, I could upload a picture, or I could take a picture with a webcam if I have one available. I'm just going to go ahead and upload a picture. I could change the area that I'm assigned to, I could change the latch interval, and I have my UDF of employee ID. Now that that's all filled out, we'll go ahead and click Save. We can see that our profile portion has been accomplished. Now we need to add me to a group, assign me a badge, and give me some rules. So first we'll go ahead and go to the group. I'll assign myself to the managers group. So we can see the managers group already has rules that we've created in previous modules. So I've inherited those rules. We can see up here that I've been assigned to a group 
and I've already got rules that I've inherited, so the rule step is finished, unless we need to add additional rules, which I can go ahead and click here and assign myself some individual permissions if I need to. Again, everything should be group-based. Only assign individual permissions if absolutely necessary. So the last thing we need to do is assign a badge. I'll go ahead and click on the badge. I know this is a smart card, and we're going to read it from the cafeteria door. So I'll go ahead and refresh there, and it pulls in my badge ID and my GUID. If this was maybe a 90 day intern or a temporary employee, we could set an expiration date. We can also assign a PIN, and we can set that PIN to expire after so many uses. Through EasyWeb, we can disable a badge as well. So if an employee is terminated, we can just log in through EasyWeb, click Disable Badge, and they will not have access to the system anymore. If they end up taking that badge with them and try to read back in the building later, we can be alerted to that. So now we have our badge ID, we have our PIN. We can go ahead and click Save. And we've completed our badge step, which means that we've completed all the steps there that we need. So now I can go ahead and click Save. And if I go back to my dashboard, I look at my compile. Now I've got a compile that's queued up in there. I can go ahead and perform some more actions within the system, or right now I can just go ahead and compile it. I'll just go ahead and compile it, and it'll send it out to the necessary devices. So let's go back to our People tab, and now we can see that I'm added into the system. We've gone through the compile process, and now I have access. So we'll go ahead back to our dashboard, look at our latest read, which is myself. So going back to the People tab, we can add the People groups again, and we can also create these users. So perhaps they've hired me as a manager, and I'm going to actually administrate the system through EasyWeb 2015. So I can just go ahead and click Add User, and I'll link myself to that user role. So we'll go ahead and select me, give myself a password, and assign myself to an area. So again, we have our steps that we need. So I needed to create my profile, which I've done by linking myself to an existing user. And now we need to assign myself some roles. So what am I gonna be able to do within the system? Here, we can provide a view only role. So I couldn't make any changes, but I could basically run reports and things like that. I can give myself everything within the system, which most likely I would need being a manager assigning cards and things like that. Or I can take away all the rights and go through and individually assign those. So because I'm a manager, I'll go ahead and click all. But if we wanted to go through, we could be very modular with our permissions that this user would have. For example, if we scroll down to the bottom and we do not want them to be able to execute scripts, we could just take away the execute scripts permission. Go ahead and click save. And then click save there so that we save all the user information. And if we go to our dashboard, take a look at our compile, we actually don't have a compile because this is just a login. So now we go to our user tab and I'm an actual user within the system and my username is Jay Clement. So if I go ahead and log out of here, you can log in with my super secret password of password. I can sign in, but you notice now under my dashboard where I had scripts when I logged in as administrator, it is not there anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and log back in as admin. So we reviewed the dashboard and we reviewed the people. Now let's take a look at the rules. So in our secondary navigation, we can create and edit shifts, group rules, auto locking and unlocking, holidays, badge unlocks, and scheduled events. So here, similar in DB Crystal, we can go ahead and we can create shifts. So we can go ahead and add and add our shift in this way. We can print, basically create a quick shift report. Our group rules are similar to permissions within DB Crystal. So if we want to add a rule, we can go ahead and create that rule. And again, we have this pop-up window with steps that we need to complete in order to add that new rule. So what's the group that the new rule is going to affect? 
So maybe office employees. We may be giving them access all the time now. And then what door group or doors are we going to assign to them? So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. These are the same permissions that are in DB Crystal, except in an easier to use format through EasyWeb. Our auto lock and unlock schedules. Again, a new pop-up window with steps to perform the actual process itself. What do you want to do? Do you want to lock down or unlock the doors? What time do you want to unlock the doors? And what doors do you want to unlock? So either a door or a door group. Again, by default, EasyWeb has compiles turned off. So you will need to go back to your dashboard to compile and push those out. Unless you want to turn compiles on, in which case, as soon as you add these new rules, they'll automatically compile and push out to the readers. We can create holidays and edit holidays as well. And we can create badge unlock rules. So this is a special rule where we have an unlock schedule, but it doesn't happen unless somebody actually badges in, and it has to be a certain person. So if we go back to our people tab, and we look at a specific person, such as myself here, and we go to the actual badge and edit it. We can see we have this advanced setting button up here. We'll click Add, and then we can see the different settings that we can add. This is similar to DB Crystal, except it's all neatly placed in one pop-up window here. So do we want it to be a master badge? If we want it to be able to unlock, then we have to enable unlock badge for that person. So we're going to go ahead and enable that for myself. Click Save. Click Save again. And if we go under our dashboard, we should have a compile. Yep. So we'll go ahead and let that sit there until we're done with everything here. So we'll go back to our rules, go back to our badge unlock, and we'll click add a rule. Again, we have all the steps that we need to complete the process. We're going to do this on a specific person, namely myself. And then what badge do we want to use? So the first one is my actual pin. I don't want to use that. I want to use my actual prox card. So we'll select our badge. And then what shift do we want this to unlock? So I've got a door unlock shift here from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. We'll go ahead and select that. And then what door? So I'll go ahead and select the cafeteria door. So now summary, me with my badge for a door unlock from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on the cafeteria door. So if I do not read in that day, that morning, then that door unlock schedule will not go into effect until I read in. If I don't read in, then it will just not go into effect at all, all day. So we'll click Save, and now we've got that set up. We go back to our dashboard, back to our compile, and now we've got a couple things built up. So we'll just go ahead and click Compile All and send those out. And we'll go back to our rules, and that's a badge unlock. It's as simple as that. And then scheduled event, just like in DB Crystal, we can create a scheduled event. Again, we have our pop-up window with our steps that we need. What do we want to do? And we're going to do an unlock. Click Next. When do we want this event to happen? Maybe we know on you know, June 15th from 1800 to 2100. We're going to have a big staff meeting out in the warehouse. So we'll go ahead and click Next. We're actually going to choose our warehouse door group. And it'll provide us a summary. We're going to unlock the doors on this date from this time. And it's going to be the warehouse doors for our company meeting. We'll save that. And then uh, we're all done. But wait a minute. We have the compile records, so we don't actually don't want to leave right now. We'll go back to our dashboard, go to our compile, and we'll compile those rules and push them out. Those are the basics of EasyWeb 2015. Thank you for attending this module. We hope it was beneficial to you. Thank you and have a great day.